Hello and welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm David Patton. Joining us now is the man who speaks to nearly 4 million listeners a week, syndicated radio talk host Mike Gallagher of his eponymous The Mike Gallagher Show. His new book is 50 Things Liberals Love to Hate. Mike, good to have you with us. Hey, David, great to be with you. Newsmax is, is a must-read for any talk radio host in America. You guys are at the top of my list, and so it's, a, it's an honor to spend a, spend a few minutes with you talking about my new book. Well, thanks so much, Mike. You know, Mike, in your book, you say that you've studied liberals like Jane Goodall has studied chimps. So you should be the best person to ask, what do you think we can expect overall from the liberals at this week's DNC convention? And predictably, liberals are all up in arms about that, that line that I wrote in the, uh, in the introduction. What I said was, um, you know, I've been watching liberals closely for over 30 years. I've studied them like Jane Goodall studies her chimps in their natural habitats and without judgment, in silence mostly because we barely speak the same language. And so, I, you know, liberals immediately became apoplectic at that, at that reference. Somebody, uh, a number of them have written me saying, are you comparing liberals to chimps? How dare you? Uh, I mean, once again, the race card can get dropped on the table uh, before you even realize uh, that, it, that it's happened. And so that's, uh, I always thought that was a funny line. I don't know what we're supposed to say Jane Goodall studied. I guess now we have to say C-word instead of chimps for fear of offending the, uh, the increasingly sensitive liberal psyche. So uh, it's, it's, it's been a fascinating experience to introduce this book to the world and watch liberals' reaction. Uh, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that liberals don't like a book called Liberal, uh, 50 Things Liberals Love to Hate. I guess in the paperback edition, the 51st chapter will be my book, because uh, they don't like any, any acknowledgement that, that their worldview is wrong. Uh, you know, the, I, I, and I'm urging everybody who knows a liberal, who works with a liberal, has a liberal friend, or a, uh, to, to add to this list and to, and to pass the book around, because I suspect liberals will see a lot of themselves on the pages of this book. Well, considering, Mike, that it's a long and growing list, were you happy with how the GOP convention turned out? And how does it compare to night one at the DNC featuring the First Lady? You know, it, it was it was eerie how many chapters of the book sort of segued perfectly into the time I spent in Tampa. You know, uh, I, I saw somebody objectively point out that there's a lot more diversity from the podium of the RNC than there is this week in, in Charlotte for the DNC. Uh, one of my chapters, chapter number 40, liberals love to hate black Republicans. And uh, I, I think the, one of the best moments for me in Tampa was was being in the, on the floor and watching Mia Love. I mean, who would have thought that a young black mayor uh, from, from Utah would evoke more images of Ronald Reagan than anybody else last week? And so, uh, you know, there's, there's plenty of diversity, but liberals love to hate black Republicans because, uh, again, that interrupts their worldview. They're, they're, they, they think black Republicans are like unicorns. They just don't exist. It's a figment of one's imagination. And if one comes along... Who, uh, who challenges the sort of liberal worldview, whether it's a Mia Love or a Herman Cain, they, they, they go positively bonkers. Just ask Michael Steele, who once told me that he routinely had Oreo cookies thrown at his feet uh, if, when he made appearances running for office in Maryland. You know, black on the out, Oreo cookies, black on the outside, white on the inside, just scurrilous, vile, ugly things that liberals say and do to a black Republican. And so, you know, that theme, you know, I felt that theme a lot in, in Tampa because liberals just are confounded uh, by, by, you know, Republicans who are of color. Uh, and, and certainly Hispanics fit that list as well. And there's a growing number of great Republicans, as you say, of color uh, that are in the party. So it will be increasingly hard for them to cope with that reality. Now, one of the huge issues that's emerging in the campaign is the question of who gets credit for the success of small businesses. Item 22 on your top 50 list of what liberals love to hate is small business. But how can liberals hate small business, the institution that is at the beating heart of our economy? Well, I, you know, the, the class warfare strategy that the Democrats have clearly embraced um, just reflects what, what I write in Chapter 22. I mean, listen, the, when the average public sector union worker has a million-dollar-plus pension funded by us, 
the small business owner is working his life away to sock away enough cash to pay the bills and have enough left over for his self-funded retirement. I mean, what a concept, paying for your own retirement with your own money. Uh, listen, liberals, I mean, you think about all the old horse and buggy operations that got wiped out by Henry Ford's clever work. Think of the small town pharmacies that were pumped by Walgreens and CVS. Um, think about what Steve Jobs and the Internet did to the music industry. Uh, but, but small business owners keep marching on. They work hard. They fight. They do everything in their power to control their own destiny, their own way of life, their own wealth. And that's why liberals hate them. The whole point of the liberal attitude towards small business is to discourage it. So many small businesses operating in so many areas to the liberal just seems unruly and hard to control. And so, you know, liberals seem to reject. I mean, many of these people have hope so that so through nothing but their own effort, they'll become wealthy. And they'll pass that wealth along to their family and to the people who, who help them get wealthy along the way. Ideally, they've done all this while enriching their customers' lives, too. That drives liberals totally bonkers. The fact is that almost all new net job creation in the last 30 years has come not from big business, but from small businesses becoming big businesses. You know, I once had Bernie Marcus, the co-founder of the Home Depot, on my radio show. He went on a tirade about how under, under the current regulatory and, and litigation environment, the Home Depot could never have made it. Um, that's a huge story. That admission should have been headlines everywhere. One of Americans, America's great entrepreneurs telling me that, you know, that he couldn't launch one of America's premier retail brands today thanks to our government. That, that somehow doesn't drive liberals nuts, but small businesses definitely do. It certainly seems the president's campaign has been on the defensive ever since the GOP convention wrapped up. The president has recently called his grade in office incomplete. Is that good enough to get him reelected? Some Democrats have to go on the offensive. I, I think that's all they've got. I was stunned at watching uh, Dick Durbin, the Illinois Senate Majority Whip, uh, respond to Brett Baer at Fox News with a tirade when Brett asked a very simple question, why did you guys remove two words, God and Jerusalem, from the DNC party platform? Durbin turned it around. Senator Durbin became unhinged and started yelling at Brett that, that somehow he was inferring or, 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 or concluding with a narrative that Democrats are godless, and, you know, how dare you suggest that Democrats are godless and the Republicans don't own the, the issue of faith. It, it, it was the most vivid example of, of the best defense is a good offense. Listen, when you can't run on your candidate's record, when you, when you can't avoid 8.3% unemployment, you can't avoid a $16 trillion deficit, when you can't avoid gas at $3.80 a gallon, you, you just got to try to try to swing for the, for the cheap seats and, and, and get, in, get in the person's face and try to distract and obfuscate and, and lie. I mean, Debbie, Debbie Wasserman Schultz was caught in a bald-faced lie over, over claiming she didn't say that the Israeli ambassador said that Republican policies were dangerous for America. And then it turned out there was a tape of her saying precisely that. That's all these guys can do. Um, and, and hopefully Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan and the Republican Party will be able to, to call these guys out on their, on their untruths and their distortions and win, and win big on November 6th. And finally, Mike, it looks like we're about to get another big jobs report on Friday, assuming it's a bad one. How should Team Romney capitalize politically, considering it comes right after the wrap-up of the Democratic National Convention? Listen, I'm an enthusiastic Romney-Ryan supporter, in case you didn't notice it. I mean, I'm, I'm work, working hard and, and, and fighting for these guys in a big way, but I also happen to have a great deal of admiration for, for former House Speaker Newt Gingrich. And Newt uh, wrote a piece this week that I think nails what Republicans should do. Uh, not get distracted by all of the distractions. Calmly and methodically focus on those three numbers that I just mentioned. You know, it's $16 trillion, 8.3%, and $3.80. Those three numbers equal failure. Now, no wonder the president says he, he gets an incomplete grade. He, he cannot possibly rest on any laurels of a $16 trillion deficit. He cannot possibly rest on the laurels of knowing that he, was, he inherited a 7.8% unemployment rate and it's, it's gone as high as 10% under his watch. 
Uh, and, and so, you know, I think if Republicans stay calm and factual, we're going to win because we have the facts on our side. And the truth is they don't. And, and I think Newt is right. Focus on those three numbers. And that's, uh, that's going to be a winning formula for Republicans to win and take this country back and, uh, and, and, and put it back on the right, in the right direction. Mike Gallagher of The Mike Gallagher Show, author of the new book, 50 Things Liberals Love to Hate. Thanks so much for joining us on Newsmax. Great, great being, being with you, David. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.